Hey, how's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another episode here on the Jeep Fetish Garage. So first off guys, for the few who have stuck around throughout this whole series, thank you guys, we really appreciate you guys. So as you guys saw on the last episode, we actually got Boogeyman up and running. It's ready to rumble. So we went ahead and scheduled our appointment over at KP Fab and Tune, and this car has an appointment to get dyno over the weekend. Before we get this car on the dyno, we wanna make sure it survives a dyno session. So we went ahead and ordered a SMG auxiliary fuel system kit. This fuel system kit is gonna go ahead and supply the added demand of fuel when running in boost applications. And it does that by doing this exactly. How do these auxiliary fuel system kits work and how do they help in making huge power and supporting our stock fuel system? It's simple guys, this is how it works. Right now we have a internal fuel pump in our gas tank which feeds our engine with constant fuel. And that's usually okay when you're not making that much power and you don't have a power adder. But once you throw a power adder in the mix and the demand for more fuel is there, especially if you're going with like E85, the need for more fuel is much more needed. So SMG developed this kit, which is pretty neat. It actually uh, utilizes an, an external fuel pump, right? Which of course you have to tap the gas tank and take out a separate line. But what it does is when you, when you hit boost and the demand for more fuel is there, this hop switch is gonna trigger this fuel pump to come on, pumping extra fuel into your OEM fuel line, increasing fuel pressure and fuel. So it's actually pretty simple. It comes with this special fitting, which goes in between uh, the OEM fuel line like this, well, like this actually. And that external fuel pump supplies the extra fuel needed. Pretty simple, right guys? So that's my explanation. So one thing I do wanna mention is that for this installation, we will need a 3764 drill bit to make a hole into the gas tank and a 38 NPT tap, So, which is national pipe thread. So I know it sounds a little sketchy here, a little scary that we're gonna make a hole into the gas tank, but I don't think it should be a problem because this gas tank is plastic, so it shouldn't generate too much heat, uh, but always be careful, always be cautious, work in a well-ventilated area, um, no fire hazards around, so don't smoke a cigarette while you do this job. And yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to do, guys. This is the only specialty tool you, you will need. Everything else is gonna be basic uh, hand wrenches and things like that. So that's basically it on the kit. So first steps first, let's go ahead and jack up the car. Okay, guys. So we already went ahead and jacked up the car. Uh, never go under a car without jack stands. We actually, to make this video a little bit faster, we went ahead and did that. Uh, there's previous videos down the timeline if you guys want to see how to jack up the car. But basically we use four jack stands, Z01 lift pucks, and we kind of raise the car in an angle to make sure that the gas from the gas tank goes forward so we have minimal spillage coming out. So the car should look something like this. And also get, get the car high enough because we're, we will be needing to take this tire off and the fender well. Okay guys, on to the first step, marking and drilling the gas tank. We're gonna start with a small drill bit to make a pilot hole, and then we're gonna end up with our 3764 drill bit. Okay, my brother's gonna go ahead and do the honors. Was that as rewarding as you thought it would be? What? Drilling the gas tank. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that's gonna take a while. Let it go? No, because it's gonna splash all over. We don't want this. Okay, okay guys. So as we let the gas tank drain, we're gonna go ahead and move over to removing this dust cover here. Skid plate slash dust cover. And you're gonna need a long 10 millimeter socket, not a short one. Okay 
okay guys now here's a, a huge huge safety tip for you guys okay when you guys do when you guys drill your gas tank whether it be your pilot hole or the huge drill bit doesn't matter guys as soon as you guys have fuel coming out do not continue to drill because fuel is going to come out of the gas tank onto the drill bit onto your drill and as you guys can see here can you see it? some of these drills have sparks and the last thing you want is causing a fire so make your hole the fuel starts coming out pull your drill out let the gas come out like we did now we wanted to be super safe so what we did is we actually ended up picking up the car from the front up letting all that fuel come back out and now we're going to drop the front end of the cart back down to make sure that we don't have any fuel there as we start our tap process so just a little precautionary measure for you guys always be very careful when you guys do something like this and again don't try this at home we're not professionals we're just simply backyard hobbyists okay jesse can you demonstrate right there what you're doing yeah taking the teflon off okay guys so what we're going to do right now is prep this fitting Tight. Is this the wrench of the baby? That's a nice wrench. That's what I mean, it looks like a toy. Purple. Okay guys, so as you guys saw in the little um, quick time lapse, we drilled the gas tank with a small little pilot hole, we let the gas come out, we actually pitched it forward to make sure that uh, all the gas came out, once the gas stopped dripping out, we actually went ahead and uh, drilled it with our proper size drill bit, and we tapped it, once no more fuel was coming out, of course. Like I mentioned, be very careful when you guys use your drill because some of those spark. 
And once we did that, we actually uh, grabbed the fitting with some Loctite 592, screwed it on there real nice, uh, got about three quarters of the way in, positioned it where we wanted it, and left it alone. We moved on to installing the, the fitting that bypasses the OEM line, which is where we're gonna connect our new feed coming from the external pump. So we did that. It was a bit hard, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was kinda like, you have to really push that, uh, that existing fuel line up a little bit to give you a little bit of clearance and push the, the inlet feed a little bit back to get it in there, but you can get it in there, no biggie. Um, we did that and we routed the hoses to the fuel pump and mounted the fuel pump. We actually decided not to use the dust cover original hose and made our own. We felt that it gave better, uh, they routed a little bit better, that's what I think. But yeah guys, um, that's that. Okay guys, when we do the electrical component aspect of the install, we're going to go ahead and remove the tire and we're going to remove this inner fender well because we need to run our pop switch wiring down back to the fuel pump so I already had taken this off because for the supercharger install so when I was putting it back on I realized that I had to take it back off so I, I only got as far as putting these little clips on so that's why you guys don't see me taking off the bunch of little torque screws but if you guys are doing it at home um, you guys are gonna have a whole bunch of little torque screws all the way across so just a heads up How do you think the build's going? You tired? You want to call it a night? Oh, you gotta hang in there, pup. We're almost done. We gotta hit the dyno on Sunday. Hang in there. Hang in there. Go take a nap. Man's best friend, I tell you. All right. So you should have something that looks something like this. Well, now she got excited. Now she wants to play. Alright guys, that was super easy to do. Let's go ahead and set this here for now. We'll come back and wire it. But I just wanted to let you guys know where I ran it. So I'm going to run it through here, just nicely like that. Um, and I took it out of here. It's simple. That's, I mean, nothing to it. Just follow these harnesses. Okay, now we're going to run the harness. Over here by Man's Best Friend. If you don't have Man's Best Friend, go get you one. There's a bunch of them in the shelters and uh, they make for the best bud. You have uh, two, uh, you have a, a negative and a positive. So you're gonna hook it up to your positive side. And then I'm gonna run mine like this into that little hole over there. So you guys can see. Uh, I might put like a little um, worm clamp, right? Uh, not a worm clamp, uh, a wire clamp, and hold it right there. Or I may not. It doesn't really matter. There's a cover that goes over that. And then it came out that little hole. Uh, let's see if you guys can see it. Yeah, it came out there. And then I uh, came around that. I'm gonna zip tie it here so it doesn't move. And then it went in back of this little bracket and up into the harness where we ran it. So now we're over here and it's time to run the electrical part. Hook up the electrical part. Okay, so they want you to hook up the both of the short red ring terminals. One with inlay fuse holder is the constant, the other is switch power, both of them to location three. Okay guys, there's no mistaking the third terminal. As you guys can see here, it's Mark three. So that's where they want you to hook it up. Terminal three. So one, two, three, and three right there. Easy breezy. And then this guy right here is gonna go like this. So we have to put some uh, pipe sealant first. So let's go ahead and grab that.
guys, so this concludes another episode here on the Juice Footage Garage. The Skidmark Garage Auxiliary Fuel System. It was actually pretty easy to do. Um, I was a little bit more uh, worried about this mod because you had to like drill the gas tank and all that good stuff, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't hard to do at all. Uh, instructions were good. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is that it's pretty basic to do. It's, it's actually a really easy install, really easy concept and they leave a lot of room for kind of you could do it this way or you could kind of find your own way kind of thing so it's like you don't have to really follow the instructions to the t but it helps as a reference yeah i kind of like picked a different ground for my relay i, I mounted my my fuel pump a little differently and things like that and you know so it's kind of it, it's just an easy kit to install um just take your time guys if you guys decide to tackle it yourself hope it's a little bit of insight for you guys I'm not a professional, so don't don't quote me on anything. If you guys drill that gas tank, make sure make sure that that fuel doesn't follow your uh, your drill, because you know those things spark in the back and things like that. Just be super careful. Have a fire extinguisher. But uh, it's about it's about one o'clock in the morning right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it, go to sleep. I can't turn on the car today and check for leaks, but I'll do that tomorrow and. I'll see you guys on Dino Day. Actually, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'll see you guys on another episode, hopefully, because I have uh, this Zetronic air fuel ratio on the sensor to my end gauge. Um, might be a good idea to have just because, uh, you know, it's boost, so anything, you know, especially with like auxiliary fuel systems and things like that, might be a good idea to just install this. And I bought this thing off the forum too. Um, but when I went to install it, I realized that I didn't have it didn't come with a, a CT uh, N gauge connection cable, so I had a, I ordered it from Electronics. Came in like one day, so shout out to those guys for delivering parts ASAP. Yeah, have a good night, guys.